Okay, back for episode five. This is continuing on from last week. Uh, we got into talking a little bit about conditioning. Uh, and I think where we left off was we were talking about like the specific nature of conditioning. So using like bikes and then going on to like the field for like a soccer or like the court for a basketball um, as an example. So we were talking about that a little bit. And then we were also talking a little bit about um, like the timing of conditioning. Um, I think we talked about uh, how long it takes to build conditioning, how long it takes to lose it, things like that. So picking up from there, what are our thoughts on conditioning and then like how specific it needs to be? What it, What's... Um... What do you mean it's specific? Uh, yeah, I guess by specific, I mean, because I think what we ended up talking about last time was like if if you have a field sport like a soccer or something like that, um, and you spend like the off season conditioning with like a bike, it doesn't really matter how much conditioning you do if you don't condition in the okay. same way as the sport is played. So like well, yeah. if you bike, yeah. you know for three weeks up to the season and then you put them on the field, they're obviously going to be destroyed, even though they might, physiologically be in shape yeah yep, yep. i think um i i will th I, I do th <laughs> i think I was, it's a good topic yeah this is where i was trying to go i think um some coaches sport coaches don't like obviously don't grasp what the different styles of conditioning and the different energy systems that are needed in their particular sport like how many times you listen to soccer coaches talk about, oh, we gotta we gotta go out and run miles. Right. But but that's also not your sport. Yes, you you accumulate a total number in a weekend, which is significant. Mm -hmm. You're talking like anywhere from 15 to 20 if you're playing two. Yeah, this is a good point. But it's it's all it's all repeat sprint ability. Right? Like because yeah, sure. like I think, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Sure, you're accumulating that total, but like some of that's walking, some of that's jogging, but what's some of that's sprinting, obviously. But what's what really makes or breaks a match is your ability to get from point A to point B or be able to get to the ball in a sprinting fashion and right. then just over and over and over and over again, right? And, and so being able to have that capacity is what's important, not necessarily being able to go out and run a marathon. Yeah. Like, I think that's, that's the big thing I think. And I think it ties into a few points, but like, yeah, just because they accumulate, you know, like, you know, we, I, we've probably all been told, but I know I've been told for sure. It's like, well, we run, you know, whatever it is, 15 miles a game. So we need to run more. I'm like, well, I don't, it doesn't really matter. Like, I mean, it, of course it matters like cumulative wear and tear, but to like make the claim of, we accumulate 15 miles, you know, it's not like cross country. Oh, we're going to run three miles in a meet. So we have to train, you know, 50 miles a week. That's not how it works. Like you said, cause it's all like specific energy system demands, mm -hmm. but like you kind of said at the beginning, it's, it's like at the beginning of the off season, when you might be doing like aerobic style conditioning to build like that base you're talking about. Well then like at that time you might do less specific styles of conditioning so aerobic conditioning could be you know instead of just going and running miles which you could but another option might be um you know like bike style aerobic conditioning continuous circuits things like that that aren't specifically running like the sport but then as you move closer to a season or you know when they need to be able to produce on the field well then you want those conditioning modes to be as similar as possible to the practice and games it's like as you yeah. move like soccer you know as you move more into like um glycolytic style conditioning like i don't want to do that stuff on the bike necessarily because you're close to the game that's what they do on the field like why not use the field as you know a replicator of what you're trying to do yeah and like when you're and i and i truly believe that you need an aerobic base in order to be able to train specifically later on like if you don't have that aerobic base then while you're getting specific in that energy system, the the training effect isn't going to be as great. See, but how how uh, long will that stay? Um, 
like the aerobic base. I don't know off the top of my head. I have to look. The aerobic base. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think that I was going to ask. It's like Logan you can get a coach that wants to play like devil's advocate and be like, well, we haven't done any aerobic training, so our aerobic base is gone. So we have well, to see, like, but, do aerobic training. Yeah. I think, yeah, you're exactly right. But I think the question more is like, well, what does it take to lose an aerobic base? You know, like well, an yeah, aerobic yeah, base, exactly. like aerobic base is, you know, like if you don't, as long as you don't sit all day, like you're mm-hmm. building an aerobic base. So I mean, you know, because what is aerobic? It's just low intensity, continuous activity. So if you just just don't do nothing, then you, you know, you're technically maintaining an aerobic base, I think. So yeah. like that, but but I think you're right. Like playing devil's advocate like that is, well, you know, we haven't done any aerobic conditioning. It's like, well, just because we haven't put a heart rate monitor on and run at 70% for three hours doesn't mean we're not building an aerobic base. I can be built a whole bunch of ways. Some of the most, I think the, the best builders of aerobic base the people that just walk all the time, which is, you know, like in sports eyes, that's like nothing, but you know, in special populations or like a special case in a sport it could be very valuable. That's what I was going to ask you, Logan. It's like, well, like, cause you know, like I've seen an aerobic base, like training block, you know, like we used to see like for weeks and months on end where it's, strictly focus on aerobic base which i don't think is wrong or you see like the other end where you know you somebody might just lift and then do aerobic style conditioning for a few weeks or they just do aerobic style stuff for whatever just because they think they have to so what are you getting at then with your question more of like what it takes to build an aerobic base because it, it is really important but I would, I would almost argue that a lot of kids probably already have a decent aerobic base. Yeah. Which well, could be wrong. I, I mean, you're playing your sport. Like, I guess. Oh, yeah. We talked about this, too. Yeah. Yeah. In like, in, like, the case of, like, basketball or soccer or, like, baseball or whatever, um, most of the time you're playing that sport all year round. Right. Right. It, it is another good – yeah take a basketball season or a basketball year, for example, like the guys get the month of May off, but they're probably still playing to some extent. Right. Right. Um, and then, yeah. right. And then yeah. um, they come back in June, we practice and train, but practice, so they only got four hours or three hours of practice a week. So it's not a ton, but they're still playing. Right. And then we get into like, we get into this time frame right now, same thing. But here pretty soon, we jump from eight hours a week to 20. Right. And so, yeah, they could have a decent, like, maybe they're maintaining a decent aerobic base. But but my thing is, like, we go from practicing three days a week to practicing six days a week. Right. I don't build them appropriately into that time frame. When we make that big jump, we are not going to be prepared to handle that, to handle that type of load right away. So then we're asking for guys to get, to get injured in that time frame. And so, like, like I said, I think a good aerobic base is needed to make sure that when we get specific, then we are maximizing uh, how we're training at that, at that level. And so like we did basically aerobic training all summer and then our, our low level low level training or like low level aerobic training, uh, tempo runs and that sort of thing. And we lifted and then they play basketball, but they aren't playing a ton. And now I'm into like repeat sprint ability. So we'll do that here for the next four weeks and then build it. And hopefully we are ready to, to start the season or to start the 20 hour weeks. Right. Yeah. So it's like a strength from a strength conditioning college coach's perspective, you're not even necessarily planning your training based off like the first game it's like you're you're like because you know like if you were just looking at the seat the year you would probably push all that back quite a ways because the first game isn't until november but since you know when hours change or like practice is going to change a little bit then you have to switch what you're doing based on what's coming for them kind of like nick talked about last time like with uh making sure they're ready for college and things like that so it's it's about more like knowing your schedule and knowing what's going to hit them 
than it is like breaking down the game schedule. When we switch to 20 hour weeks, like I take a back seat, all, all my running is goes away. Right. Um, because we're practicing and so much. Right. And so I, t- I really take a back seat from a training aspect, more or less what I do in that time frame is we just, we just lift. Right. So we're working on um, strength, power, and speed in the weight room. Um, trying to maintain, obviously probably we're more main trying to maintain and train speed and power because we've built strength for a while and you hold on to strength a lot longer than you hold on to the other two qualities. So that's kind of what we're doing in that time frame, which is really good as well. Cause I can keep the intensity lower, which ultimately just the, the, the load on the, on the athlete themselves is, is much less um, it's in that time when we're trying to practice a lot. I mean, we go from practicing for a one and one hour or one and a half hour team practice to we can do a three hour team practice. You know, we right. can double it. We can almost double it. Uh, on a daily basis so <clears throat> my my stuff is falling is taking a, a back seat to what we're doing in practice and practice itself gets us ready to play the game right it's not mm-hmm. there's nothing i'm doing that's getting us ready to play i'm trying to get us ready to practice at that intensity whatever that intensity might be and everybody's going to be different every school is going to be different every coach is different so whatever that intensity might be, I've got to make sure that we are prepared to handle that. Now, now I've got to come talk to our coaches and make sure that we practice in a way to handle a three game week. Right. Cause now we come into the season and I think our first, I think our first week we play one game and then, and then the next week it's a three game week. So we got, I think we got an MTE and like another non-conference game. Right. So in a three game week, like that's going to be substantial for certain guys, guys that guys that are starters, other guys that are playing more minutes. So now, now my role changes once we get in season in the guys that aren't playing and aren't accumulating that load. And we need to maintain the aerobic capacity or, or, or anaerobic capacity. Now I've got to train them on the side because they're sitting on the bench. Right. right. So right. If, they, if, if their name is called, there's an injury or something, then I got to make sure they're ready to go. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm curious. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this, but I, I'll never forget because it was in, I think, I don't know if Nick, you were in the class, but um, we were talking about like running VO2 max and lifting. And one of my professors said something like, you know, if you, if you think that like, you're going to run your way to a super high VO2 max, you're wrong. He's like, lifting has a huge component in the VO2 max. And I'm, you know, and like for people like us, like that's a huge thing to keep in mind because it is easy to like think that, well, I have to run my way to a high aerobic capacity, things like that. And like, of course you do to some extent, but the resistance training plays a huge role in that. And I'm just curious if either of you have any thoughts on that or like what the mechanism is. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough. I don't know the, the specific- I know it. I know it has something to do with like the, the body's ability to um, get rid of waste. So like the, the more, like the more tolerant the body, the muscle is to, or the more efficient the muscle, the muscle is at getting rid of lactic Lactate acid. With the yeah. core, core cycle. And it's like, and you can't do that unless you lift weights, obviously, or you can, but it's not, it's to a lesser degree than if you lift weights. So like he, like the, my professor's point was like, yeah, you could, you can run all you want, but there's always that other side of the equation. So like if you don't have the lifting component, you're not going to drive the VO2 max up, you know, so everybody that wants to just run is wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some, some things to like, um, just econ- like running economy, obviously. Yeah. And that too. Yeah. There's tons of research, tons of papers on that, like yeah. you know, weight training for cross country to improve running economy. Right. Any I was thoughts? just thinking about the, I was thinking about the muscular endurance, like the, yeah. the local muscular endurance and how like you'll have better delivery systems to the muscle and clearance systems for the muscle. And you'll be better be able to use the lactate that's available and break it down through the core cycle like you were talking about. Yeah. Because if you don't touch, like, just think about it. Like if you haven't done that in a long time and then all of a sudden, even if you just go do like the air bike, yeah. and you do a really, really hard minute, like you're knocked out for a long time just because your body hasn't had to do that in forever. 
but then you do that super often and like doing a minute really hard like you can get to the burn and then you can kind of push the burn and then sometimes people like the burn and then like they kind of get used to it and like um their nervous system is ready to handle that load and then the peripheral uh, their muscular systems are able to handle everything that goes along with that so like to me it's more like i don't know any like i don't know i don't want to say i don't know anything but i don't want to say like i'm like an expert on vo2 max training and like upping your vo2 max and tracking no. that because i never do um but i really just think it's a matter of exposing your muscles to those systems and being able to efficiently use those systems. So if you need someone that has needs a higher VO2 max, you do have to train those muscular endurance systems at the local spots. I think it has something to do with too. Like, I don't know what the term is, but it's like, you know, most things in the weight room are like your, like the threshold type sets. So like sets of five, like, heart rate's going to get up and like, you know, you have like the line of where the body starts to produce lactic acid and you're trying to drive it up so that you don't, you know, you can do more work under that line. Cause it's like, once that starts to happen, it, you can't, you, you can't just continue with the waste product accumulating. Like you have to rest mm -hmm. or stop or whatever. So it's like the more you can train that and lifting obviously is a huge, you know, method of doing that, you know, just by nature, I think. And I think, you know, that's, in a, it, it kind of relates back to like our conditioning too. It's like, just because we're not running, you know, lifting is a part that prepares the body to deal with that part of running as well. You know, mm -hmm. not that this is all about running, but it's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, any other conditioning thoughts? I don't really, I mean, I think we, what's that? Conditioning test. Oh, conditioning what are, what are tests <clears throat> what are you using them for why are you why are you doing them you know i think the biggest thing with conditioning <clears throat> tests is i i'm not a huge fan of them because i don't really know why we're using them it ever i always felt like everybody always wanted a different conditioning test and i have and i'm like whatever i mean you know whatever like they can all have whatever they want but but I don't understand what each conditioning test is for. Like, like I, like we, you know, I've seen like mileage tests, which great, like, you know, people can will themselves to run a mile. I don't care, but, and then the same, but the same with like a, you know, like even like a shuttle type test, it's like, are we just seeing how fast they can run a 300 yard shuttle, you know? Cause it's like, and and I think a lot of them, you know, it's like, hey, preseason conditioning test. If you don't pass the test, you're on the team. It's like, well, 95% of people don't follow their own rules, so it doesn't really matter. But I think there's some value in that sort of thing of like, hey, this is the the the, the thing you have to do. If you don't do it, you know, this is the consequence. Or, you know, you don't get your yeah. gear or what, whatever. But I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if you're using field tests to – to predict VO2 max and you're using that for something, using that for training or for, or for whatever, I think that's valuable. Um, if you're just doing a field test, huh? What did you say? Field test? Like a conditioning field test. Like uh, you can do the beep tests and predict VO2 max off of that. Oh like, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, all, and all that type of stuff. Um, but my, my favorite is, uh, Hey, this is our conditioning test, and we do it, and then nothing like Correct. it's not utilized for anything. It's literally just a time waster. In, in my in my opinion, it's just time waster. See, I'll go back and take We're back pre -test a little bit this, of what I said. Post test this. We're pre test this, post test this. Like if you do, if if you have half a brain and you trained fine, well, and and you had a you were consistent, well, they're going to get better. Like I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Well, like, the best, I think, with that sort of thing, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, my football team, we had our conditioning test and everybody passed. Really? Everybody passed? 120 people? Everybody passed the same test? How? But I will go back. I said a lot of it's stupid, which I do agree. But 
like we we started getting into more of like beep and yo-yo style tests and i do like that for kids that actually try those i think like you actually see like okay this kid they actually tried and they failed at level whatever and then, mm-hmm. then you know you run if you run it again preseason or postseason or whatever i think that's a good way but it's like like you said it's like if you if you've been around it at all you can kind of guess like where they're at and unless you're like really trying to see how far they can go then again it's kind of irrelevant i don't know i think most of it's irrelevant yeah i just i that, that's what I, that's what I, I just like or uh what this is one of my all-time favorite stories <laughs> like so we we run a beep test right for a specific team at a specific university that will be not named and Good. Uh, thank you at the end of the at the end of the beep test like three girls didn't pass oh, I already get oh. team so uh, <laughs> three girls didn't pass the beep test right so then uh there are consequences like they can't practice until they pass right. the beep test so they got to keep doing it all right well two of the girls end up passing at the next time which is great but this other girl it's because they got better they got way better this other girl is not going to pass out of shape, right? Significantly out of shape. Well, she's also supposed to be the one of the best players on the team. Okay. So, uh, so one day we're going out to re- retest this, the test. We get out there and it's like, it's like, oh, she's already done. She passed. <laughs> it's, and the coaches ran it. Yeah. And we're like, well, she wasn't even close. She was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Away. She Yesterday. missed by five minutes. <laughs> She was eight levels away yesterday, but she passed today. Well, what they had done is they shortened the they shortened the the running lane by like a meter or two meters or something like that. So yeah, it passed because she didn't have to run as far. Yeah, that girl tore her ACL two weeks later. Yeah, yeah, there you go. In in practice because she was really out of shape, hadn't trained all summer, and was trying to well one had ran the beep test like five days in a row, and then <laughs> two had tried to go out there and just go with well, no, like with, with no training. And the thing with them too, it's like, if you're going to do them and then you're going to have a consequence, it's like, it better be very well thought out. Otherwise, otherwise you start the year off as a fraud. Like if you don't, it's like, Hey, we're going to have a conditioning test. If you don't run it in whatever, three minutes, you're not playing. And then, like, when that happens and it's three people and it's, like, two of your best players and it's, like, oh, like, well, I can't really practice without them. No, you have to sit there and be like, no, you're not practicing. But nobody can do that. They, it's always, like, well, we'll make an exception. It's like, oh, there you go. There's there's your season right there. You yeah. just lost yeah. everything. So, so, it, it, so, in my opinion, either, either you're sticking to your guns and you're yeah. really holding them accountable or you're not. And if you're not, then why are we doing conditioning? Correct. Well, because think about what the consequence usually is. Hey, if, you're not, uh, if you ahead. fail, then uh, Coach O, we're going to have you uh, – you're going to be doing conditioning tests every day with Coach O, 6 a.m. It's like, what? That, that <laughs> was the worst. My problem? That was the absolute worst. It's like oh, it's like oh, <laughs> I'd get so pissed too because these <laughs> kids would come in at 5 a.m. to do their – it wasn't 6 a.m., it was 5 a.m. to make up their conditioning for the day before or for failing their test. And then they'd come in and suck at that. And it's like, listen – like you're punishing me. Like oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sacrificing my time and day and, and freaking life, mental mental stability <laughs> to sit here and watch you push a box up and down the court because you chose to come in out of shape. Yeah, I was just like, so figure it out. Like, what do you think, Nick? About conditioning tests? Yeah, this is a sensitive subject. I think. Yeah. You know, Nick, Nick's the next the closest thing to an athlete on this part on this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, you're the morale guy, so I'm looking for a little positive boost. <laughs> All right. So don't even tell me you from like an it. athlete's perspective. If you are giving a conditioning test, you're a piece of shit. If you can't go into camp and preseason wow. and not pass it, <laughs> unless Fair. you have some type of physiological yeah. deficit. Like, like, Sarah, Sarah, like, like Garrett Earl. Yes. Who could like not pass a 300 shot. Either way, yeah. from an well, athlete's perspective, thing. if you give me three months and you say you have to pass a 300 yard shuttle and run it in this time, 
I ran it in the fucking time that I was supposed to run faster than, or I ran faster than what I was supposed to run it in. Like, don't be lazy and don't be soft. Just get it done. Especially those like cutting. That's, that's, that's me as an athlete speaking, right? Well, he, me as a coach, it's like, okay, I have an athlete that has to do it. And it's the same mentality. I have to get them to be, I have to basically make them run more than what their test is. So they just slaughter their test and they do right. it every time. And they sit and bitch and moan. And then I say, either doing this or like, you're not going to pass and you're going to go in your freshman year and you're going to be not as good as the other girls at this. And they'll be, they'll just kind of turn around, whatever. But from a coach, like, I think Logan's perspective is like, if you're using it to like basically see where they're at conditioning wise and have like develop a plan to better that, like as they go through the season, so that when you get to playoffs postseason, they're in good shape. And great. I also think that how often does that happen? Uh, no. Well, I also had an experience with the beep test at a certain university with a certain team. And uh it was the off season. And if they didn't get to a certain level, they couldn't practice and they had to do the same damn thing. They had to go condition and I'm nice. like every day. And then they would have to come back and try it again and again. And I'm like, what is the point of this? And then they get all this performance anxiety that's developed around it as well and it's just like i don't even think she's gonna pass it if she could just because she's shooting herself in the foot mentally you know what the best thing it's too it's like okay yeah we're gonna do this test when you fail you're with coach coach o or coach nick or whatever and you're gonna run it every day at 6 a.m okay perfect i'll be there coach then the kid shows up every day at 6 a.m it's like well that doesn't mean that that being or that doesn't mean the kid's gonna go to bed earlier to get there at 6 a.m it means they're gonna get five hours of sleep come to the conditioning test, fail because they don't care usually, fail. Then they have to go to practice, practice all day in the off season, get destroyed. And then guess what happens when they get hurt? Oh, this kid got hurt. Well, what, what weight room exercises aren't we doing that makes it hurt? Party else got them. Yeah. Like it's like, Oh, well we shouldn't have squatted that day if they were going to have to do the conditioning test and then practice or, Oh, they hurt themselves. So, what did we do wrong uh, in the weight room that hurt us? Well, what do we mean? I don't know. I also disagree with the fact that if you're choosing a conditioning test that does not resemble the game and then the coach comes back, we have, say, even if you do have a majority of your players pass the test, you're going to go into practice and you're going to go into a game and if you beat the shit out of them on practice, the kids are going to still cramp. They're still going to be tired. And the coach is going to be like, why are we tired all of a sudden? Like, yeah. what is going on? Well, you didn't why get a chance. Condi- why aren't we conditioned? And it's like, why did the conditioning test See, what, to? When you think about it more, it's like, it's like, wow, 80 kids and they all pass the same test. Like, how is that even possible? It's not. That's the other thing. The, yeah, like a coach gives you a plan. Hey, here's our conditioning plan. This is what I want them to run. Like, all right. Hey, that I would, I, I used to just be like, do it exactly. I would not even argue. Like, oh, okay, you have a conditioning plan. Oh, you want them to run uh, three miles on Monday, seven miles on Wednesday, and then eight 300 yard shuttles on Friday. Okay, perfect. Go ahead, do it. I'm not arguing with that. It's not my problem. I'm arguing with that. To, to return, to return, I, I really want to return to. Uh, yeah, get us back on track here. With how how quickly it takes to build your aerobic base, okay. So I'm going to tie this together with conditioning. Good. When I when I was in college, you had to run 300 yard shuttle. You had to, you had to run two of them. So you ran one. You got a three minute rest. You ran another one. Right. I don't remember right. what my was supposed to be. You got three minutes of rest. Huh? You got three minutes rest. I think so. Maybe it's two. Come I don't on, don't there. distract him. Let him go. He's making Sorry. the point. <laughs> Anyways, my point is, my freshman year, I think I ran 300 yard shuttles every week the whole summer long because I was like, I am not going to fail this test. Right. So I go out there and I blow it away. Like See, just, mission accomplished from your coach. Right? Okay. Hey, I would applaud I you realized, for that. I quickly realized year. my sophomore, junior, and senior year. You don't have to do that anymore. I don't, I don't have to train – 300 shuttle all summer long no i can just train it like maybe a week or two weeks before i gotta go to camp see this is a great point pass and still pass so that's what i would do 
so like two weeks before camp, I'd I'd run it a few times, make sure I got my make sure I got my time. Okay, I'm good. I'm done. Right. And I go to camp, I pass, I just stroll into camp. So, but my freshman year, I was the most in shape, obviously, that I'd ever been. But my sophomore, junior, senior year, I was the strongest and most powerful I'd ever been. Did you play better on the field your sophomore junior? I trained. Yeah, I was all American. But oh. I so, <laughs> but, but but I trained, but I was also Dude. but I trained uh but I was just like, no, I'm not worried about conditioning. I'm a lineman, I'm not worried about conditioning. I'm gonna I'm gonna lift weights. Mm-hmm. Lift yeah, and, weights. well again, it's like why does a lineman need to run a 300 yard shuttle repeat test? A 60 second effort. What some what what football play last 60 seconds? None. Well, and definitely none for a lineman. No, <laughs> those are sub ten, right? It's like six. Because because if, if you're running down the sideline with a ball, I'm not following you. No, and if you have the ball. We already to, have problems. To line of yeah, yeah, but that's a good point though. But see, the thing is, you could have shown up your freshman year or every year, you know, and you pass the test and it's like, oh, Ogden is in phenomenal shape. He's worked hard all summer. No, like it, that's that's mostly my point. It's like, yeah, yeah it's like, let's not be blind. Sure I, I was, but here's the, it's like, no, I'm going to add on to that. You remember? So one of my buddies who was playing, so Foth, you remember Foth? Oh yeah. I remember Foth. He came into his senior year. He was a quarterback his first four, like four years. He came in his fifth year and he played D end. He goes from like awesome. 230, 240 to 270, 275. Good. And he like, like no one like really cared about his conditioning that much, but like, just the weight alone, like he was the same guy. He was strong as shit, but he could not pass. Like, like he could never have run the same like time ever. Like he couldn't even like come close to averaging. So like when you're talking about linemen running the thing, it's like, they have so much more weight to carry and so much more work to do in that 60 seconds as well. It's like, correct. You can't maintain that weight. And And, and a lot of it's, a lot of it's dead weight. Like my freshman year, I was too, (laughs) My senior, I was three hundred. Yeah, like, all like, I mean, yeah. stronger, but I was better. Like that's yeah. just all. The, like I mean, like, yeah, you ain't gonna go from two thirty to three three oh five and be freaking Arnold. <laughs> all American though. We're, at, we're we're about out of time. Yeah, so. we're about out of time. So, uh, Come thanks on. everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>